Okay, so before we can uh, talk about whether or not uh, bigger molecules are polar or nonpolar, we have to discuss molecular geometries. Okay, so this is where atoms are at in sort of three-dimensional space. And it's dictated by electron repulsion. All right, so uh, we know that electrons are negatively charged, and that means they will repel each other. And so electrons in two bonds, which we often call electron groups, are going to repel each other. And so if we wanted to, say, um, think about the uh, molecular geometry of, say, CO2, which has two electron groups or a double bond between each of the uh, oxygen and carbon atoms, okay? That gets the octet rule for all the atoms involved. And so uh, this is an example where we have two electron groups or two bonds, all right? Um, how far can these two electron groups get away from each other? Um, it turns out that they can always get away from each other 180 degrees on average. And so carbon dioxide will always take this kind of shape where the atoms will pretty much line up in a straight line. They vibrate um, a little bit depending on the temperature, and, but on average they can get away from each other 180 degrees. That's the furthest they can repel each other. If this, these electrons in this double bond try to increase this bond angle, say go down further, 181, 182, what happens is it decreases this bond angle. And so on average, these will be 180 degrees apart. And since these uh, atoms pretty much line up together, this molecular geometry is called linear. Uh, you can also have uh, electrons, um, or excuse me, uh, molecules with three bonds, uh, like CH2O, uh, where the carbon will have a double bond between uh, the oxygen and then a single bond with each hydrogen atom. So now that we have three electron groups, three bonds repelling each other, how far can these electron groups get away from each other? On average, 120 degrees. Just divide 360 divided by three, and so that's how far they can get away from each other, or something like this. I just have three hydrogen atoms on carbon, which isn't correct, but this shows you what the shape of this uh, molecule would be, generally like this. So this kind of looks like a triangle to me, and so uh, we actually call this trigonal. And since all of these molecules are in the same plane, all of them are sort of flat on this piece of paper, we call this trigonal planar. Okay, so that's three bonds, and of course carbon can go up to four bonds, four single bonds, like in methane, CH4. Now if I just drew the structural formula for methane, you might think that they can get 90 degrees apart from each other. But uh, that's untrue, not true. They can actually get further away if you move it out into three dimensions. Okay, and it turns out that methane will take on this shape where each hydrogen atom is 109.5 degrees away from each other. And in three dimensions, that's the furthest that all four of these bonds, these electrons in these bonds, can get away from each other. And this takes the shape of a tetrahedron, or a four-sided pyramid structure. And so this is called a tetrahedral geometry. All right, so we can either have two bonds, three bonds, or four bonds that give rise to a linear, trigonal planar, or tetrahedral. We can also have two other scenarios where we have four electron groups but not all of them are bonds. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at ammonia. Ammonia has a formula of NH3. 
That's because, of course, which we drew previously, nitrogen is bonded to three hydrogens and it also has two electrons all by themselves, which we call lone pairs. And so, of course, nitrogen needs those because that gives it eight valence electrons for the octet rule. But that is also going to uh, impact the geometry. Now, overall, with uh, three bonds and one lone pair, the overall structure of all of these electron groups is going to be tetrahedral, just like methane was. But one of them is a lone pair, and so when we take away the uh, lone pair of electrons and think about just where the atoms are at, ammonia turns out to look like that, where the nitrogen is bonded to the three atoms, hydrogen atoms, and the lone pair is not pictured, but it would be right here. That's very important uh, to note that those lone pair electrons are still there because that's what's repelling these uh, hydrogen atoms into this shape into a different plane. If there was just three uh, atoms and not uh, three bonds and a lone pair, it would take on a trigonal planar shape, which is of course different than this structure. It still looks like a triangle if you look straight down, but the four atoms are all not in the same plane like they are for trigonal planar um, molecules with three bonds. And so this is trigonal Pyramidal. All right, so there's one other uh, basic molecular geometry we should go over, and that is for molecules that have two bonds and two lone pairs. And of course, the perfect example of a molecule like that is water. Oxygen has a single bond with each hydrogen atom but also has two lone pairs. And so that, of course, is going to impact this geometry. If we just look at the uh, structural formula here, we might think that this is a linear molecule, and it is certainly not. Uh, the four electron groups are going to set up a tetrahedral geometry, just like methane did and just like uh, ammonia did. But when we think about just where the two atoms are at, we take away two um, electron groups and put them as the, use them as the lone pairs, what happens is that the molecule takes on a bent shape. And this is very important. If water was a linear molecule, like uh, say CO2, it would probably, or not probably, most likely, uh, definitely, uh, going not going to be a liquid at room temperature. And that would be because it would not be a polar molecule.